So getting there, created a nice little patch. It's coming back clean now. There's a few clumps. There's one down there. Go get rid of. It's quite nice, clean and silty on the bottom. It's deep. I just want to see if I can try and get this stump out. I'll do that last. But I've got a nice area here. It's all clean. I can just see a little bit out in the middle. I can bait anywhere. I just thought I want to see. I don't want to show you where I am. Well, I won't show you where you are, but I'll show you where we are with the raking. I'm just stopping <coughs> if I hear anyone or see anyone. If there's any paddle borders, I'm just putting stuff down and heading, heading off behind the tree, trying to keep stealthy as I can. I'm completely clear now. I've got a huge tree out, which was down there. And I've pulled out all the weeds. There was so much fishing line and floats. I'm going to take all that home. But all this is totally and utterly clear now. I've got a nice spot. I left a little bit just here. But all around here, I've got a nice big basin bit. All beside this tree now. That's all clean. I don't want to go mad and just 
totally destroy everything. I've just left a little bit down here. But I'm going to let it settle for 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I'm going to get whack a load of bait in. And sport a tub. Let's get out of the way. Sweet corn, the ground bait I had yesterday. Dead maggots, dead squats, casters, some live maggots. Bit of everything in there, a load of hemp, a load of crushed hemp. I'll get that balled up and we'll get that in. But I'm going to leave it to 20 minutes, half an hour just to settle. <laughs> Let the river settle. Okay, ground baits all ready. Load of dead squats, dead maggots, casters, hemp, corn, some live maggots. Hey guys, I'm all done. Spent two and a quarter hours. I'm just bringing back pure silt now. My hands are black. Clothes are soaking wet. Absolute filthy stink. Jeans are mucked up to hell. But I've cleared it. I've got a massive tree out here. Right in front of me. I managed to get it out. Two of them actually. There's like an old Christmas tree or something. I'll just... Okay, the base all in. It's about half past twelve in the afternoon. I'm going to come back tonight and mix up more ground bait, more corn, hemp, and all the rest of it. Put another sort of like 10 balls in, five on each line, and we'll come back first thing in the morning. See you then.
there's a camp out there until it gets light. It's about quarter to five, ten to five. We've got a feeder out on the right. Little window feeder, just one ounce. We've got 11 foot six. I am two method feeder, like the rod, uh, feeder rod. That's up to 12 pound breaking strain. I've got my Mitchell Everset Gold 3 reel. That's with 8 pound Shimano Technium line, down to 6 pound Maxima hook length. And I've got a size 10 hook on there and two bits of cord. I need to put another shot on there. But what I've done is, I've done it like a lift, lift uh, method, lift bite method. So I've got a short 4 or 5 inch hook length. I've got a single AA about 3 4 inches away at the top of the hook length. I've got 2 AA above that. That's a size 12 cameras in B520. I've just got the um, 10 foot rod, 10 foot float rod. The 3000 reel again. I've got six pound. I stepped up the line because it came down yesterday and I got caught on something and snapped. So I've got six pound Maxima main line and I've gone for four pound Drenum Super Specialist hook length size 12 cameras and B520. It's a single bit of corn, a nice big bit of corn, keep it for a red panda. I'm not going to go too mad on the bait, I've just put one ball of ground bait in. I'm going to start with loose feed, just see how it goes. If not, I can put more ground bait in later. I've mixed it all up, ready to go. I haven't put any particles in it. I've got a little bit left over from yesterday, I didn't want to feed it all, it was way too much. But I'm glad I came down yesterday just to check it out. I was going to fish it for, as I say, for half an hour, 45 minutes, but I lost the hook. And that was the only one I had. But I'll have a 13 foot rod when I was just hitting the trees, so that's why I put my 10 foot came back, quickly rigged the 10 foot rod up. And this one's 11 foot, so it's fine. This one's not touching the trees. So. Fingers crossed for a few bites, eh? I don't want to go mad with the bait because you're probably not used to masses of bait and it, they might make them a little bit wary. I'm Oh, that was a bream. It's a roach. Look at the size. I'm going to weigh this. I'm going to get it on the net. It's right in the of his mouth. Let's put this on the unhooking mat. Oh, 
Sorry about this. Be a bit crude, I've got a little uh, way back. I'm going to try to put this on. Just hear that. Start. One pound six ounces. guys, first fish of the day, it's only been in five minutes. One pound six ounces. Take a look at this. What a cracking loach from the Wentham. Single bit of corn tip for red maggot. Fantastic. Let's get this straight back. Oh, guys. I thought I had it on video, I didn't even press bloody record. Anyway, first fish of the day, one pound six ounce roach, you probably see it on your GoPro. <clears throat> Here the float's set up. We've got a ten foot float rod. It's just a Shakespeare Omni ten foot float, and that's matched with the three thousand reel. We've got a six pound Maxima main line, down to two AA and a single number four. We've got a small Four and a half, five inch hook length. That's a four pound Drennan Super Specialist with an AA because I want a lift bite method. Uh, down to a size 12 Camerons and B520. Single bit of corn, tip for red maggot. Let's get this out.
you saw that. It was in about five seconds. Absolutely beautiful run. What a session. All that raking, hard work, pre-baiting, two and a half hours of sweating, raking the place out. That's paying dividends. Nice big fat healthy rod. Let's get this back. If I get another fish, a bit more baiting. Just I was trying to gauge the response. Just get a single bit of corn. I'm going through the side, through the top, push it right down. Come out the side. Just get a single maggot. Go for floral. Through the skinny tail end. Just hooking out like that. Got plenty of hook points showing. Okay, what I'm gonna do then. I'll just put a number four on, but it's too much. It's quite tricky this float. So I'm going to put number six on. It's just um, the floats an old school. Drennan 2AA drift beater. It's really fine. It's got a nice. I wanted a, a, a bodied wagger so it holds the water, rides the water a lot better. It's got a really thin cane or fiberglass stem so it cuts through the water. The, the, rate, uh, the waves don't affect it. And a nice buoyant bulb, bulbous top here. And I've got that. As I say, two AA down, and it's just sliding. I've got a stop knot above. I've got a bead that just slides up till it hits the stop knot. The float goes up. Obviously, no shot above the float or anything. And carry on till it hits the stop knot. Right, I'm going to get a bit more corn and hemp in. I'm laying off the ground bait for the minute. Now it's a bite. Yes, it is a bite.
Nice that one. No, I didn't. Still there. Let's get some more corn in. Okay guys, only been in five minutes, got another fantastic run, took it on the drop. Oops, straight up. I'm good. <laughs> Let's get this fella back, there's three fish already. I'll get this baited, cast back in. I'm going to change my float in a minute because this one is just so awkward. Number six, number eight, and it's one minute, it tips really high and then it's really low and it's just so awkward to get it how I like it. But when I get a bite, there's no mistake in it, it's just so under, so. Normally don't like that much tip showing.
just lowering it into the peg. Okay, yeah, got my landing net over there. Just keeping it on my float. It's got a little side tray of bait. Got some worms in there. I've got my casters under there. Just dampening a little bit of water in the bag so I'm not drying out. The strawberry scopex corn. Normal sweet corn. A few maggots. Hemp's in there in water. I've got some dead maggots, some more ground bait in a bucket. Got a small box of tackle, scales, the bag. Oh, that was me. <laughs> Nothing on the feeder yet. I just bought it in though, but two grains of corn were gone on the last one, so I've tightened right up to it. I've taken the window feeder off and put a one and a half ounce bomb on there. Just lower that in a bit further out, just the end of that bush. Get a few more casters and hemp him. Pull it in a little bit closer. There's no flow here. If I go a couple of inches out, another six inches, it starts to flow a little bit. But maybe that's where they want it. We'll, we'll see.
it's a pipe. I think he's got it. This is here. I saw it. Damn. Okay, I'm gonna try a worm. It's a tip with a red maggot. Nice big bit of worm. No keep net today. Catch and release. comes up quite steep so if I move to float closer that's why it's uh, showing a lot more we'll go out another couple of inches drops off a little bit with shelf there's a bite fish. You said the Wempson's got no fish left in it. They're all absolutely immaculate. Never been hooked. I can tell it's never been hooked. Got a scale out of place. Another perfect rod. You can tell by his mouth of protruding lip and his top lip set back. And blood red fins. Alright, let's get his back. What a blinding session. Well, I didn't expect it to be this fast and furious.
I wanted to fish the um, centre pin reel today. I wish I had now. I will next time. I'll use this rod though because the tree above me is 10 foot, isn't it? I've got a couple of foot spare. Just going to go for two small bits of worm. Bite straight away. Can't believe it. Have a stunning mud. Like peas in a pod, aren't they? Look at that. Mint. We want the worms. Hey, a little sod. <laughs> right. That's fish number five. I think it's a lively one. Let's plop them straight back. I'm going to go and check my feeder rod again. It's a bit strange. I might put worm on that. Because I think they might be having the corn away. I'm not registering anything. Oh, I didn't get them to really sit down. Definitely registered, that's definitely worth it. Yeah. We're alright this time, so I'm going to put that back out.
flight plan. Got the volume set to minimum on that. Let's put the bait runner on, just in case. Let's go. We do it one. We'll get this one back. Tiny rope. Tiny, tiny. Another beautiful rod, pristine. Okay, it's six o'clock, I've had six fish. I'll just put three maggots on this time. Just to see. on the feeding line. Look at this guys for a rod. This is a clonk over a rod. I'll get it weighed in a minute. So I'll hook it. Look at the scissors. That's a forceps. Just lip hook. Okay. Look at that. What an absolutely fantastic bud. Not as big as the other one. One pound four. Scale perfect. Let's slip this straight back. Okay, guys, it's had another fantastic run. One pound four ounces. Absolutely, absolutely scale, scale perfect. perfect. Scale perfect. Never been caught. Never been caught before. On the River Wensum. Hard work. It's paying off. The pegger created yesterday came down for two and a half hours, raked it all out, put about 12 balls of ground bait in, casters, maggots, hemp. Sweet corn. Came back later last night at nine o'clock, put another ten balls in, five on each nine. And I've just come down this morning. I've just started with one ball on each one. I'm just guiding them away, I don't want to overdo it. It's predominantly main feeding at the minute. Cassis, hemp, and sweet corn. I just put one ball of ground bait in. I'll get this fella back. Absolutely scale perfect. Mint. Straight back out, straight into a chub, little chublet. They're all loving the corn, the sweet corn is doing the business, I think. Lively, nice little chub. Look straight back.
blind in session. If I can get out there and spend two or three hours raking a peg, putting in the hard work, I'm sure you young guys can. I know people now expect everything to be all manicured and maintained for them and nice platforms and that. It was never like that back in the day when I was fishing. You never go anywhere without a rake, clear yourself a peg on the river and that. People want to turn up to a nice commercial platform and all the rest of it. If you want to go wild river fishing, you need to put the work in yourself. And if you put the hard work in, you're going to get reap the rewards. Let's get this rebated. Getting a nice big bit of corn, hooking it through the top, right down to the bend, rolling it round, so it come out the side of the hook, the uh, side of the corn, just like that. Just getting a red maggot, tipping it through the tail, so there's plenty of hook showing. We'll get it straight in. Very tentative bite on the float. This tench bubble's coming up. That sun's probably in the way. It's just ever so slightly bobbing up and down. I'm just waiting for it to lighten and fast disappear. Classic tench bite. Oh, dog, guys. <coughs> Sweet corn's bigger than it is. Okay guys, it's quarter to eight, it's gone a little bit quiet, so I've cut the ground bait out, we don't want to keep putting too much in, I'm just loose feeding at the minute, hemp, casters, and sweet corn, occasionally a few maggots just to bring a few fish in, this looks quite strange, we're getting absolutely nothing on the feeder rod, got, got a bomb on, I've shortened the hook link up because it was way too long, it was about three foot. I had it on for when I did my chub session, but I just shortened it off to about 
two feet, take a good 12 inches off. And I've just put a great big bit of worm on there and a single caster. I haven't got the bait runner on because I've got the reel behind the butt ring or the butt rest and it's locked in there so I'm straight on it anyway, it's literally beside me. But the tench bites, I missed three or four, which is so tentative. So what I've done is I made up another hook link, just a small, short one as well. Same again, about sort of four or five inches. I've just gone, I haven't put it on yet, but I've just gone down to 3.2 pound hook link. Oh, the float's gone under. Damn you. It's gone under, come back up again. Yeah, I've gone to a 3 pound hook, 3.2 pound hook link. And a size 14 hook, and I missed that bite. But this morning they were sailing away, they just, they get occasional like that, but, you know, it does that about a dozen times. And it just whizzes away. So far, I'm not connected with any. Should have hit that one, should have hit that one. Busy talk as you. But it's come, yeah, it's quite a quarter to eight. It's nearly doors yet. It's just nice to be back out fishing the river locally. Not done it for many, many, many years. You've got to be careful, I won't come here overnight, that's for sure. Float is just right on its limit. It's probably because they're not used to bait going in all the time, so I don't want to lash it in and spook them. And Make him wary. It's a lovely day. It's going to be flat, calm, still, about 22, 23 degrees. Mm -hmm. Steady on. That glittering in the sunlight. Bar gold. Putting a smaller piece of corn on. Well, let's try a white maggot. I'm just thinking what to do with the um, feeder line because it's odd. I've tried corn, I've tried worm. I've got a bit of worm and castor on there at the minute. I've got some pellet bands here, and I've got a little tub of pellets. Let me just cast this float in. Try to turn the camera around and it's sailed away straight away. Another fantastic rod. Well, the fish have come back. 
I think just laying off the bait a bit, that's a good one. The white maggot did the trick. Look at that. Stunning fish, isn't it? Look, little skein out of place. Fish number 10. That two tiny little roach, about that big, but didn't for bother filming it. Keep everybody happy. Everybody happy? No keep nets today. It's the middle of summer, so. Oh Jesus. Nearly went arse over to it. <laughs> right, try that again. We'll have a smaller bit of corn and a white maggot. And I'll... Since nothing's going on on the feeder, right, I'm going to bring that in and put a bait, bait band on and a pellet. Zero issues with weed or anything. It's so clean out there now. There's obviously that's caught on something. It should settle. If not, I'll just bring it straight back in and cast it out a little bit further. Say there is a ledge. Yeah. That's not quite settled right. Let's get this back in. You know when you're over the ledge, the float just sits so much better. Yeah, yeah, it's got a little box, a little tub. It's just a mixture in there. Load of different pellets, wafters, a few mini boilies. Got some of the mini Vandenite match boilies, dumbbells, pellets. So I might just start for. 8mm pellet. Put a band on. These are worth a go. The Van der Leyen Mini Match Boilies, squid and krill flavour. We've just got some of these simple bait bands. A tiny eye at one end. I think I'll get a small one. A tiny little eye at one end, you just thread that on the hook. You can just band your pellet over. And put the hook through the band. Rather than keep changing the hook link all the time. I'll do that in a minute. I'm gonna give it five. So I did put two great big balls of ground bait in there. And it's cast a little bit further out to the edge of that little bush tree on my right hand side. But I have noticed literally right down the edge and I can see a little bit of water moving I'll show you where here yeah, what I've done is put a smaller band on put the 8mm on and I've got some micros
Oh. Took myself right into the corner, so no one can see me on the other side. Got this big bush behind me. I'm gonna get it cast out. Not too far, that one went too far. We brought back a load of weeds. So I'm gonna just go where I've been raking down there. Okay, that's it. I'm pretty tight on that, but we put a bait runner on. That was me. Okay. I looked up and the float had disappeared completely. It's nicely hooked. Straight out, that was lucky. Fish number 12. So many rud. I'm going to start putting more loose feed in now. Quite nice and tight on that feeder. Got a tight line on it. Bait runners on. The rod. The rod's locked in. The butt rest there, just in case there's any violent takes. So, but the bait runners on. That's gone round the post, so it's not going to jam up. All right, let's get this cast back out. I'll get some more bait in, I think. We're going to keep baiting every cast now. Sorry, I'm in your way. This is drifting with the flow. Oh, and a bite. The flow is literally got the merest pimple. So I can see any lift bite or any sail away. Hang on a minute. Just thinking about it. 
the sun's right in the way. We hit this one. Missed it. Oh, I saw a little uh, knock on the tip a minute ago. Okay, guys, a couple up to nine. <clears throat> Just had a bit of a play about, it's gone quite quiet. Put on a, a light hook length, like I said, 3.2 pound, size 14 hook, and just four dead red baggots. It's literally been in 10 seconds. So they're there, but seem to have gone off the sweet corn a bit. Another pristine mud. Sorry about the sun there. It's just light on the water in front of me. I'm just hooking one through the head. I just had two beeps on this right hand one with the uh, pellet on, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Say I've shortened that hook length right down. I expect if it does go off, it'll be a screamer. There's four deads on there like that. Still got plenty of hooks showing. Get this back out again. I'm keeping the rod right beside me now. This is literally here. Well, it's warm already, it's so hot. Oh, there's a bite straight away, and again. And we're on. Oh, I missed it. Another rod, about 15. Scaling downs works. Oh, we're on the mat as well. Scaling down works and switching to the dead bag, it's just getting bites straight away.
you guys doing all right? Sorry, not much talking in this one because. Keep quiet and stealthy. Try to keep as quiet as possible. What's going on here? Yeah, huge lift bolts. Yeah, he's got a few days off work, so making the most of every single day. I've had this plan for a while. Oh, that's a good sail away by. Dead maggots are working a treat. Taking it on the top, that floats lying flat on the surface. <laughs> oh, where are you gone? Oh, come back, my little fella. What are you, a little minnow? Yeah, it's a little minnow. Alright, might be time to get a load more bait in, I think. Yeah, that's picked that up. I've got three AA at the bottom here, in about the sort of like last 12 inches. Then just a number eight. <laughs> yeah, I'm just making the most of every day, trying to get out every day. They say I've had this plan for a while, but I was waiting on the rake heads to arrive from uh, online stock shop. So. Quite a bargain. I've got the. Uh, I've tried all around Norwich to get a conventional soil rake, metal soil rake. Could I find one for loving the money? It's sold out everywhere. No one had any. The only place that had some was B and Q, and it's thirty quid. I, thought, <laughs> I ain't paying thirty quid for a, a soil rake. So I went online, got the whole rake and a rake head for about. About 20 quid. Then when I was in B and Q, I picked up 20 meters, a 400 kilo braking strain tow rope, rope, lashed it on with a 100 pound line, going around each fork five times and a half hitch, and a whipping knot at each end. I'm going to strap some uh, lead on it to the handle and to keep the handle flat. So when I'm bringing it back. Scar in the bottom, otherwise, the handle can lift up a bit. I mean, the rake head's heavy enough, two great big steel heads on there. And it's cleaned this out absolutely perfect in a couple of hours. Right, let's get this cast back in. As soon as the dead maggots are working, I'm going to start feeding a load of dead maggots. I think. There's a bite straight away. And again. I'm casting a little bit further out and then holding it on a tight line so the lead swing in towards me. And I'm on the outside of the ledge. There's a bite, there's a bite, and it's gonna go. Thinking about it. Don't 
Ah, a bit of useless noise. Way too far. We're in. Where's all the wens and roach gone? It's all rud. Ruddy rud. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Right, let's try three or four live magnets. Come on, fella. Off you go. Oops. Oh. Have a rod. Too close. Just way too close. We'll see. We'll see. I thought I just dipped a bit. Ah. It's amazing just one or two changes and it'll bring everything back. Fish number 16. I mean, they might be wild fish and very rarely fished for, but they're not stupid. They're not going to give themselves up and hang themselves. Cast it a bit further out and hold it on a tight line and let it swing in. Seems to be better just running through ever so slightly. It's a very gentle trot through. It. 
See, I'm so glad I came back last night and brought the rod. For I'll just make double check and make sure things are all right. Otherwise, I've been poking the bushes all day. The trees above me with 13 foot rod. Ten foot sample. Oh, there's a bite straight away. Can't even sit down. One chuck. Right, I'm gonna go for the waiting game and put some corn back on. I think so we're gonna need one a chuck. Nice, but not what I want. Alright, back on the corn. <clears throat> hey guys, so how do we rig completely up my ledger rig because things aren't working? I've got a spool of Sort of like um, hair rigs and bands and that, and I had a couple with the bait spike. So I put on a squid and quill 8mm mini match boilie. I'm going to mould a load of micros around there. And the rig I've just put on a, it was inside a loop, and I didn't like it. So I just put a snap link swivel, hook links to that, put a bead underneath. And it's, the lead's totally it's free running now, completely free running. I'm back on corn, but you've got to wait for the bites. Still chucking a bit of hemp and corn over this line as well. Mold a little conker on. And get this cast back in.
Ahí va, ¿no? being tight with the bait, I'm just trying to keep the peg clean as possible so there's no bait lock lying around on the floor. Oh, I'm catching it at the minute, it's a roach, a rod. Can't seem to buy a bite from anything else. It's just some maggot only. Nothing on caster, nothing on worm, nothing on corn. window of opportunity is gone now. It's just gone 10 o'clock. We'll still keep plugging away for another hour. I'm going to change your shot and pattern up because it's very. Uh, the flow is very mild. I'm just going to put most of the shot around the float like you normally do. And I'm just going to keep one AAA down the line. Get out of there. 
Another little rud. Can't buy a bite on anything. Sweet corn, worms, castor. Even the maggots are uh, strange. Dead maggots are working. As soon as you put a dead man maggot on, or a dead maggot on, the flow doesn't settle. I'll we'll probably give it another 15 minutes, and then we'll call it quits, I think. About 15 minutes ago, I had a bit of sweet corn and a red maggot. Got up to go for a week. Float zipped under, missed it. Typical. I'm going to bring the ledger rod in in a minute and retire that. Let's cut the casts. Can't speak too loudly because there's someone residing in the woods beside me, about 50 yards away, the coffer I don't know. <coughs> Okay guys, I'm all done, back at the car, it's just gone half eleven. Oh, that was a good session. Frustrating. In the end, I ended up cutting out the ground bait. Just loose feeding hemp, a little bit of uh, casters and corn. I had six really good bites right at the end there, from eleven to half eleven. Tench bites. And I missed every one of them, just could not connect. They were just so wily, they are just that tiniest little one. Two little pimple on the float and then just sail away so quick. And every time I was, had the rod in my hand, strike, nothing. So float under, whoosh, well, count one, one, nothing. Count two, nothing. Straight on it again, as soon as that float, straight away, nothing. Ah, oh, frustrating. But there, because right at the end there, from 11 o'clock, Quarter to 11 ish, I could start seeing those little pinprick bubbles coming up right in the swim. I changed over back up to the in the end uh, to the 12 cameras and B520, see if I could connect with them. And I was just getting all the bites on a single piece of corn, like a nice medium piece of corn, plenty of hooks showing, or the point of the hook coming out of the corn. I just could not connect with any of them, but. Um, some fantastic rud there at the start, all day long, really. Um, no roach, just all rud, a chublet, a couple of gudgeon, a couple of dace. So it's got potential, and I didn't get disturbed. There's, you know, obviously someone residing in the woods, about 50 yards to my left, which I saw him sort of climbing the trees, having a peek about. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't go there night fishing, no. It's into dusk or early morning but well, it's a fantastic day i'm glad i put the hard work in glad i raked the peg out got some nice quality fish there absolutely all pristine never been caught before not a scale missing absolutely beautiful fish anyway i hope you enjoyed it get back out there put the hard work in you know buy some couple of rakes and dredge out a, a swim for yourself get down to your local river stay safe all the best guys, and I'll see you again in another video. Tight lines!